Have you ever wondered how to write music in the style of Zelda? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome to Studio Composing. My name is Steven Malin, and I'm here in my home studio where all the magic happens. This is where I write for video games and film. And today we're gonna to be doing a special request video, a question that comes from Fisk Pudding 127 who on a recent video asked, okay, so what you call the Zelda chord is when the dominant resolves down to a major chord on the lowered third degree which again resolves a half step down to a major chord on the second degree, and it somehow pulls it back to the key of that last chord, in this case, D. Or could you explain it in some other way? So this comment was on a recent video where I explained the music theory behind a track I was writing for a game called Beardblade, and it's where I mentioned a Zelda chord, which I described as moving down a half step from a dominant chord. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of demystify that a little bit and kind of jump into some of the ways that we can try to create Zelda sounding music. So let's try this out. So the first thing we have to understand is that the Zelda series was actually composed by numerous composers. It started off though with Koji Kondo, who is famous for also writing for the Super Mario Brothers series who also eventually kind of had to start sourcing it out to other composers because of the number of games. But there is a core series of games such as The First Legend of Zelda, Number 2, A Link to the Past, um, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, uh, a couple tracks on Wind Waker and Skyward Sword. And there is an iconic sound found in those soundtracks that you don't quite find in the other Zelda titles, such as the Game Boy series, um, Minish Cap, and any of those other ones that really kind of take the sound a different direction. So what I'm referring to today as the Zelda chord is specifically when we take one of two things. We either take a chord and resolve down by a half step, and it kind of functions as the dominant back to a one chord, or the second style is if we actually walk upwards and we create a resolution that is actually a series of two whole steps. So for example, that might be E flat, F, G, which then resolves back to one. Our tonic chord, the C chord. So you might be wondering, what does this have to do with writing music? Well, what you can do is if you are writing a tune that kind of adheres to basic music theory principles, which is where you're using one chords, four chords, and five chords, also called tonic, subdominant, and dominant chords, what you can do is you can spice it up a little bit by actually kind of including some of these extra chords and thus creating this Zelda mystical fantasy style sound. So let's take a look at how these exist in the first place in some of the original tunes and how we can apply this. So for example, just a couple off the top of my head, let's look at one of the, well, the main theme. So already at the very beginning here, this piece is in B flat major. So we'd expect to find a five chord, a dominant chord, an F chord, as the final chord of that intro section leading us back to one. And sure enough we do, but instead of following a traditional chord structure of maybe a one, four, five, Kondo instead decides to take an A flat, which is a flat seven chord, and for those of you who understand modes, that would be a mixolydian mode. Moving down to a flat six chord, moving down to an F. So essentially here we have that downward resolution from a G flat back to a one chord. Another example, let's look at Zelda's Lullaby, 
which you find in a lot of the games. So in the final section, This piece is actually in C major, starting on a C7, C major 7 chord, kind of alternating back and forth between C's and D's, which is a borrowed 5 chord. Um, we call that a secondary dominant chord for those music theory buffs out there. But essentially what's happening here is we are ending the piece on an E flat, F, G, which the G is the dominant chord. So essentially we're just kind of adding in these extra borrowed chords to help accentuate the end of the piece. Let's take a look at another one. How about the Dark World theme from A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo? So in that theme, which is one of my personal favorites from the entire series, all we have in the key of C minor, you'd expect to have a one, four, five, maybe a six, back to a one. But what Kondo chooses to do is instead of using that five chord, which is a G major, he keeps it in a C natural minor scale, keeping the B flat. But instead of using a 5 chord, he uses, yet again, a major 7 chord. In the style of really the rest of his tunes, he loves to use that upward resolution. Another example, we have Kokiri Forest from Ocarina of Time. Already from the beginning, the intro is very similar to the other tracks we've looked at where we have the walking up whole step chords, and then it keeps going. And so right there, the whole track just consists of C major, B flat, but then it kind of goes back and forth. The same exact chords actually, F, G, A flat, B flat. It's a really cool technique. And then some other examples that might use the other form of the resolution where we move downwards by a half step or upwards by a half step for that matter. We have the house theme that we find in most of the games. that thing where it just walks down in this case with so D minor, I'm sorry, D major, C, B flat, down to an A major, which is the five chord of a D. It's just walking down. Another one is the Windmill Hut, also known as the Song of Storms from Ocarina of Time. Same exact chords actually, B flat to an A, which resolves perfectly back to the D minor. So this works wonderfully in both major and minor. And then one final one, let's take a look at the Twilight Princess Hyrule Field theme, another one of my favorites. I 
love that because what it does is it's in a key of E minor. So we would expect E minor, maybe to an A minor, to a B major, back to E minor. But what he does is he takes the E minor, goes to a four major chord, which is the A minor, A major. And then he goes up by a minor second to an F major. And then the four of that chord, the B flat. And he actually resolves upwards by a half step to get to the B major, which is the dominant, the five chord of E minor. So as you can see here, the style is to make sure that you have a dominant chord and find a way to use a borrowed chord to either reach it upwards by a half step or downwards by a half step. Or the other style is to just walk up to that dominant chord. So for example, in the track that this comment came from, from Beer Blade, I was writing the village theme where I start in the key of D major. Here comes the Zelda chord, which is where I walked up A flat, B flat, C major, which goes nicely in the Mixolydian mode back to D major. And then in the second section, the B section of that track, I start on the F major chord. Then here comes the next Zelda style, where I go to an E flat chord. And it always helps if you can add some chromaticism, which are just half step walks down. Uh, if you can add some of that to the melody. So that's how the Zelda chord works. I encourage you to give it a try and try implementing this into your music and see how it can spice it up and make it sound more like that style. <laughs>